want to get on the same page with you. Sprint goals, if they become obsolete when you're reading the guide, the product owner is the person that can pull the plug on the sprint. The scrum master and the development team can influence that decision, but the scrum master or the development team can't make the decision. Just want to be clear on what the, or what the textbook says, and now let's just talk about what, how it played out in the mistake that I made. Going back around 10 years in London and a situation whereby we came out of a sprint planning meeting, came very clear in two to three days with this new team, the stuff that we were doing did not seem relevant anymore. And in our sprint backlog, we've got around three or four sprint goals. It became clear that one of the goals was becoming obsolete. In a pretty overzealous and gregarious type way, I was like, look, we need, we need to stop the sprint now because this sprint, the goal has changed. We've got, to, we've got to stop this. This is not the way we do scrum. I want to take a quick step back here and give you a gauge of the dynamic I was dealing with in this financial company. We had someone who was overlooking all of product, like a product director. For each, say, team had a product owner type person, probably more like a BA, if I'm honest. And that's not a good or bad thing. In Scrum terms, of course, we know that a product owner should be the one decision maker with all of the power, all the autonomy, but that's for another vlog. Anyway. It was already the case in this company that the head of product was pretty skeptical, not the biggest fan of using Scrum, just sort of, sort of like the new age hippie hogwash, whatever. So I was like, no, 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 let's give it a chance. I think Scrum could be good for this team. The product owner slash business and for the team was kind of on board. When the sprint began and we saw that one of the sprint goals became obsolete and I was like, right, this sprint, we need to can it, we need to stop it. As you can see, that goal has changed. BA slash product owner wasn't sure, but I kind of galvanized a team and they were like behind what I was saying as well. Because it, it's true, the goal did become, one of, one of the goals did become obsolete. So when we pulled the plug, what had happened was it meant that we had to regroup and have another sort of sprint planning meeting. The impact of that was, was pretty strong. That information went all the way back up to the product director person. And when they found out that the team had pulled the plug, we had pulled the plug on the sprint because of one sprint goal changing, it turned into, wow. So you guys, you people in this team, it's the case that it's all about agile theory or scrum theory. Just because one thing changed, you decided to stop everything and go back into a meeting and waste more money. Now, there's issues in that of itself to see these events as a waste of money, but that's not the point. Point was, I stopped the sprint, I made a decision on behalf of the, the product owner or the acting product owner, which is not really right. I might have the influence as a scrum master, but not the authority. So that was the first mistake or the first screw up I made. The second was, was being way too binary. We're talking about two or three goals in a sprint backlog. One of the goals began to look obsolete. Okay, it wasn't a complete write-off. Me wanting to follow the text at the time, I ended up wanting to push to stop the sprint because things weren't done perfectly. That was the second mistake that I made. The third was lacking an awareness of how such a radical decision would impact a dynamic where there was already cynicism for us using Scrum. All of those three things created a really big screw-up because then it turned into this team pulled a plug on something, they didn't let it wait out. Now in reflection, your sprint is meant to be no more than four weeks. And in this team, it was actually two weeks. So what was really gonna happen if I had let it play out? We only had one week really left on that sprint. What is the worst that was gonna happen? We would have got into our sprint review, we would have seen the work we went for versus the work we got. And empirically, we would have seen very quickly that something had changed. And that could have been a driver or a trigger for the, the BA or the product owner in the team to be able to speak to stakeholders and have the information more available for the next sprint planning meeting, rather than dramatically just pulling the plug. But instead, we ended up in a situation whereby there was you know, a really tense dynamic of, so you stop the sprint and here's the impact. Going forwards, I would say it's been very, very rare in a hundred plus teams that I have tried to influence a situation where we need to cancel the sprint because, you know, one week or two weeks is not a very long time. You're coming to the end of it in any case. The sprint goals need to truly become obsolete before I would strongly advise a product owner to pull the plug on a sprint. That is my Scrum Master Scrub. I hope that's useful. Knowing when to use the spirit of the law versus the letter of the law. 
for me is really important in being able to give Scrum a chance in helping teams become effective. Like and subscribe, same place next week. Thank you.